You know, I remember the day that, um, I guess, I was in North Korea, and we learned that you had been asked to be ambassador to South Korea. And I can't remember, was that 1997? 97, 97, yes. 1997. So I remember that day very well because, you know, I think most of us were sorry to see you go. And um, by 1997, of course, this organization had been working for a couple of years. 1996 had been a difficult experience because of the submarine incident mm -hmm. in South Korea and the North Korean submarine running aground there. Um, but at the end of 97, when, when you left, I mean, what was your feeling about this experience? How, did, you, did you think to yourself, well, gee, this is going to work? Uh, gee, this was just too difficult? Or... I mean, how did you feel about what had been done and where it was going in the future? I think, by and large, I felt pretty good about it. I thought we had built an institution, small and to some extent fragile, but we'd s developed a set of, set of uh, practices and procedures for dealing with the North Koreans on some of the most sensitive issues imaginable. Uh, even then, of course, it was unclear as to what the future might bring, because we were operating in an area of real uncertainty and always were aware of the fact that particularly in the case of Washington and South Korea, we were in areas of real political uncertainty and that the what we were doing was never without controversy. So, but when I left, I, uh, I left in the fall of 1997 and I felt pretty good about Cato. I thought it you know, it, uh, it gained some real traction. And I think for the next two or three years, that traction process continued. You, you mentioned that well, you were trying to get this cross-cultural uh, melding, mm -hmm. excuse me, and you um, put together some ideas to facilitate that. And one of them, you didn't mention it, was the keto lunch. Yes. Which was that if, if I think it was if three, if Japanese, South Koreans, and Americans would go to a lunch, Kido would pick up part of the tab. Right. And so whenever I had, there was a knock at the door at lunchtime, I knew that. They were trying to fill I, out their I ranks. Were trying to fill out their ranks. <laughs> yeah, because it what actually we. actually worked very, very well. It was well. very effective. Yeah. It was very effective. Money does have a certain drive. But, uh, <laughs> no, I was trying to break down these national silos right. because I noticed after the first few months Americans went to lunch with Americans, Japanese with Japanese, and Koreans with Koreans. And uh, Umezu and, and Cheung Jin and I, we would go to lunch, the three of us. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, there must be some way to spread that. So we did, and it worked. It worked. Actually, this is going to be a little bit of a surprise, but, you know, as you know, Bob came after you yes. in Cato in the from the, what year did you start? 2002 Two. Two. Yeah. to 2005, I guess, right? Six, yeah. Six, and I'm, I'm curious, you know, having listened to Ambassador Bosworth talk about the early years, and you came at the end. I mean, the, I'm, I'm curious for your perspective on, you know, how, how far along, did you see the results of what he had done initially in terms of how the organization functioned when you were there and and you know what was the feel of the organization at that point and the project yeah. too when i stepped onto this escalator mm -hmm. uh the going up or down it was well we were <laughs> it was you we weren't sure at that point uh there was still a lot of the ethos um, the organization working together the organization is something separate from the governments themselves mm -hmm. And in fact, we had established with the North Koreans, this was very important, a separate identity. Mm -hmm. So the North Koreans could deal with us, even if there were problems with any, bilaterally, with any one of the governments, they could deal with Kido in a constructive way. Right. But that fell apart very quickly when the Americans essentially decided they wanted nothing to do with Kido anymore. And once you had a lack of American leadership, in the organization, uh, the the parts began um, to squabble, 
Mm -hmm. And it unfortunately got really very ugly uh, between, for example, the Japanese and the South Koreans near the end. It, it, was, it was really very sad yeah. because yeah. not only was it hollow, but it got rough and uh, very uncomfortable. And I think those people who had been there for a while felt very sad to see this organization that had been built over so many years and had been so effective with the North Koreans fall in and start devouring itself yeah, the way that yeah. it did. I'm sure that's true, and it's sad. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Washington's reaction frequently to North Korea's bad behavior is that a conclusion that the way to modify that bad behavior is to not have any contact with them. And that's what happened in 2001, 2002, and uh, that's not the only time it's happened. But what's also interesting about the later period, and I remember we discussed this, is, you know, it became pretty clear to people after 2002, when the agreed framework essentially collapsed, that this, this wasn't going to go to the end, this whole process. And yet I remember the North Koreans continued to sort of hold on in dealing with Quito, continued to try to find some light at the end of the tunnel. And um, th that's a very interesting development that most people aren't aware of. That's true. They stuck rigorously to the protocols. Yes. Even when we were essentially squatting on their soil and not no longer building the LWRs, and it was clear we weren't, they did not really breach those protocols, and they told us that they would continue to abide by them until we, it became impossible virtually to do that because we, uh, we made it clear that we were about to pull out. It was interesting to me in uh, late January of 2009, I went to North Korea as a private citizen, as part of a small delegation, and we met with senior North Korean officials, including Kim ki Uh who made a point of telling me in our first meeting that uh, they were taking good care of my, as he said, your <laughs> light water reactor project in Shimpo. He said, it's still there, it's all ready to go. And I was a bit taken aback that uh, there eight years later, right. it was still my project. Right. And they were still taking care of it. But I think that's exactly right. I think they hung on because in some ways this was the, over time, the only really effective point of engagement that they had with the outside world. It was a way in which they could engage with Seoul, which was critical to them. And it was a, a way in which they could try to engage with the United States.